Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, admin, um, I think you can help me put in, uh, bring in the guest speaker. Good morning and good afternoon. Also, save us wherever you're joining us from. We're 30 in the building. Looks like we're still on holiday or people have gone for summer. So please share the link um, with 10 of your friends. Tell them you can afford to miss this. I've got gold for you um, today. Okay, so please do go ahead and do that. Um, I want to welcome all of you um, once again. And um, I'm really excited um, to be here um, with you. Okay, so today we have our export doctor. And, you know, we're talking about international um, doing business across borders this month. And um, we're going to be, I mean, today is an interview session and I'm going to be engaging him um, on what does it mean exactly, you know, um, to engage in imports of business across border. What are the things you need to understand? Um, because um, one of the things I found out about Nigeria is um, many of our people never really tell you what is going on, as in step-by-step -step process of what you're likely going to be involved with. And so people have joined all kinds of business and they lost money. I mean, someone was telling me about someone who was doing Forex and then had lost so much, so much money, right? Simply because they didn't properly do their due diligence. And I said, Forex is too volatile. You can make a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money. And with instability in the Nigerian economic system and the Naira you know, we don't know what Naira is saying. Uh, it's almost like our people can wake up tomorrow and then, you know, go back to the basics the next minute. I don't even know how the people do exports. I don't know how they are hoping. But today we have a professional in the building and then we're going to be doing this together. Okay. And if you have any question on export, please feel free um, to send it to me or to put it on the chat box. I'm going to look at it and I'm going to ask our uh Okay, some of these have lost huge money in millions. Aha. So already, Nancy is already um, corroborating what I've said. Um, I, will, I wanted to say, Pastor Dele. Okay, so I want to welcome our doctor, um, Dele Ayemibo. Oga oh, Dele, how are you now? Fine, good day. Yeah, good to see you. Same okay. Day. So let's get into this thing. I mean, um, I see it all the time. People are trying to do trainings, come and learn exports, come and learn export. And I remember that I engaged one of them offline and I said, um, how much did you make last month from this export thing that you are shouting that we should come for the training? And the lady couldn't respond. And I said to her, if you are not making money, and then you are telling us to come for export training. Then don't you think something is wrong? And why did I ask that question? There was an era where everybody would tell you, oh, come for fish farming training, come for fish farming training, come for fish farming. And it was training all over Nigeria. And my deep research really showed, that, uh -huh, snail, showed that the people are running those trainings where people have lost massive money from fish farming and snail farming. And that training was how they recouped what they had lost. Because they never talk about their failures and what they did. So they would just shout, hey, come for snail farming. And people were doing all these things, and then people were in trouble. Now, export is a huge, I mean, thing. It's really going by the rates at which Naira is waking up, resurrect, he's not resurrecting, he's dying, and then uh, waking up. Right? He's in a state of comatose, right? He was on oxygen. Right. And so exports should naturally look like, oh, wow, uh, um, this is something we should do to earn some good money. Uh, <laughs> Nancy, Bill, I say you're high, don't see. <laughs> you know, um, and so the first question I want to ask you is, given the economic landscape of Nigeria at the moment, is um, export is it really a lucrative business or is it another bubble that may <laughs> bust if care is not there? That's where I'm going to start from. Okay, export has been with us as mankind from time immemorial. So, and it will continue. It's not just 
because no nation is self-sufficient. So mm. one way or the other, we need to trade. Uh, so it's not just like any other business. It's something that will always remain with us and nation must do, not just for an individual, even for the nation to survive. Nigeria, for example, the reason we're having issue with FX is because we are not generating enough FX and mm. we are spending a lot of FX because a number of our crude oil is swapped. So we are really not selling, even though our production has increased, we're not selling and earning as much as we should. So it's not like any other business. It's, a, it's not, and I won't talk about bubble in the sense that there are different areas. So what individual need to now look at is, okay, where is my strength? Where am I, where am I going to choose to play? So I can decide, okay, I want to do minerals if I'm a solid mineral person or I'm into manufacturing, I want to do manufacturer, manufacturing or I want to do recycling or I want to do raw commodity. Now, the most common one that people hear about is commodity, cocoa, cashew, ginger, gum, arabic, and the like. And, and a number of people have lost money. Most of the time, that's where the issue happened because it's commodity, the price is volatile, uh, the margin is very thin, and the risk is higher because of the quality issue. Since it's coming from the farm, any issue with post harvest, uh, post harvest handling can eventually make people to lose money. So people are making money in export. I export myself to the UK and I make money from exports. And a lot of people, I, I've been monitoring export data in Nigeria since 2006 when I was in the bank. 2006 till last year, there are people that have been in the business for that long. Of course, a lot of people have come in and go out just like any other business. You just need some understanding because it's international trade, it's knowledge intensive. Mm. You are trading across borders. So you're not just knowing things about your country. You also need to know things about the country where you are shipping to. Those are the mm. things people need to put in place and have a good understanding of before they start. And then of course they can minimize their error rate as much as possible. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm gonna backtrack a bit. Um, I remember there was a time they told us, oh, they need cassava in some countries. Plant cassava, plant cassava, plant cassava. And people went into cassava planting. In fact, people bought acres of land and planted cassava everywhere. Right? They say, ah, oh, you make money, you know, and people, but people did not make money. What went wrong in that instance? Okay. I'm sure you knew that era. What went wrong? Yes, I, I'm aware. Up until now, I've not understood <laughs> what went wrong with that transaction. <laughs> now, when I heard that news, sincerely, I was surprised because it was the government. And it was cassava cheap shipment to China. Now, and I went to check at that time, and I realized that the cost of cassava cheap at that time was about 100 plus dollars. Mm. And the cost of producing this thing locally for shipment is not going to be profitable. So when I heard the announcement and what the government is trying to do about it, I was a bit worried. So I'm not surprised about what happened afterwards. I don't know who informed the minister that made the announcement and those that, I mean, you know, sometimes also in Nigeria, we just, just in the B2. And whatever, maybe there's an agenda going, I don't know. But the announcement for me was not well informed because the product we're going to ship to China, we will not be able to ship it profitably at the level we want to keep it. Because the more you add value, of course, the more you can easily control price and, of course, sell at a better price. But was it going to be very close to the primary level because it's just cassava cheap? You remove the cassava, remove this, uh, the bag, cut into small, small sizes, dry it for shipment. And, and there's a good demand for it in China because of production of ethanol, which is used for many other industrial goods. So it, it wasn't going to be profitable. Ab initial, sincerely, the reason for that announcement, I don't know. <laughs> okay, because, I mean, uh, people bought uh, expanse of land, though, and they, but they, they made cassava, and this cassava it did not... Uh... Okay, the other thing I'm going to ask you is, um, there is food shortage in Nigeria, for example. Um, things are very expensive. So it would, it would appear that we don't even produce enough to take care of ourselves, right? And so if we don't produce enough to take care of ourselves, why should we even export to start with? I'm just asking, right? Um, because yam, for example, I know that yam is, I mean, we eat Ghana yam in America and mostly in Canada. Right, and I don't know how Ghana is able to export yam. The Nigeria is struggling to export yam, um, but Nigeria cannot even feed itself. Right? Don't you think before we even talk export? Do you think 
there are opportunities even within Nigeria, um, you know, or what exactly is the problem, um, you know, that we are having all these issues about there's famine, people don't have enough to eat, um, you know, in fact, the protest is primarily about hunger, right? Um, so if we don't produce enough, why should we even talk about export? So let's look at the food we eat. Mainly rice, yam, cassava. Those are the major, and beans. Those are the major food that Nigeria eats. Those are the only things that we export. <laughs> what we export are cocoa, cashew, ginger, gum, like if I go to agree. But there's so many other things Nigeria is exporting. Nigeria is exporting minerals. Nigeria is exporting manufactured goods that are not food. And Nigeria is exporting a number of other products that are not even uh, related to food items. So if we say, should we export, for example, corn is an export product. Nigeria prohibits export of corn. For what you're saying, because a lot of factories in Nigeria, and this has been on, not just now, it's been on for a long time. A lot of factories in Nigeria use corn as a raw material. As a matter of fact, some manufacturers import corn into Nigeria to be able to use in their factories. So, but, but if I were to answer that question, I think we should do both. Mm. We should increase the volume of production because we need forex. So we, if we say we will not ship because we need to produce locally, we're going to still incur a lot of cost because we need pesticide, we need seedlings, we need a lot of stuff we need for the farming, and we're going to have to import them, and we need forex to import them. So if we don't generate forex, it's still not going to likely bring down the price of food significantly because a lot of input required for that farming are still going to be imported. So my opinion is it should be both, but we should work towards increasing our production capacity and be able to use it locally, but also to export the product. Okay, so that brings me to my original first question. What does it mean to engage in export? In, um, I mean, in, in a layman's language, what does it mean to ex um, export products from Nigeria um, to any part of the world? Is this something anybody can, can just wake up and say, I want to export? Oh yeah, let me go to the border or let me go to immigration and say I have cassava, I have a uh, cocoa, and I want to take it to uh, you know because you see a lot of people online. I mean, um, I mean because part of if I think export, the first thing that comes to my mind are those mails I receive to say uh, I'm the wife of the former president of Burkina Faso that died. You know, my husband <laughs> left me a lot of money, you know, and then I was looking for a trustworthy person. To share the money, and I with. found you to be trustworthy. I found you to be trustworthy, <laughs> and I'm trustworthy to me. I mean, our, our creed says I'm I'm a symbol of trust, and I'm trustworthy. You know, and say we want to transact. I mean, so what is export? And um, is this something anybody can just you know venture into? A lot of people already do export. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a number of people travel to America, and they carry a lot of stuff with them. Sometimes actually to sell, uh, sometimes to give loved ones, but some people actually carry, for example, I know a lady that was going to America and, and carry a lot of granite bottles and is going to sell it at a price that he was able to cover more than half of his ticket, of our ticket price going to the US. So people are already exporting. They are just doing it if informally. Hmm. In Nigeria, for you to export formally, and not just in Nigeria, in many countries actually, most of the time you need to be a registered business. In UK, for example, you might not need to register. You can start as an individual. You can trade as an individual in UK. But in Nigeria, you won't be able to do that. So some countries allow you to be able to trade as an individual as long as you're paying your taxes. But some country like Nigeria, you, you will, if you're going to export formally, you will need to be a limited liability company. Mm. And you will need an export certificate. Some people call it an export license. Export license can be processed online within 24 hours. As long as you register your company, limited liability, and export is one of the objectives on the memorandum and article of association, then you can obtain your export license. And you don't need anybody to get that. It's a very simple and easy process from Nigerian Export Promotion Council. You go to their website, submit your detail, upload the form, uh, pay with your card, and 24 hours you can get a mail to download the application, sorry, the certificate. The certificate is a prerequisite for document you are going to present to the government for export. There's a platform 
tradesystem.gov.ng that CBN has created where you can go. You basically go there to declare your intention to export and you inform the bank about it. You choose a bank because that bank, the money must come into it. Now, there's a regulation around it in Nigeria such that if you're spending from Nigeria, you must bring back that money. If you don't bring back that money, your bank and CBN will be chasing you because trade is a tool for money laundering. So mm. people are uh, trading sometimes. Let me give you an example. During when Buari came in the first era, 2015, price of Indomie went down in the UK significantly. Mm. Indomie is a, a cash cow in the UK. People ship Indomie to UK like no. With now the jackpot now, it has increased the demand. Wow. So people do a lot of shipment to UK. I, I, I also export Indomie to the UK. Now at that time, the price dropped because people were willing to ship at almost cost price, even lower. They were moving their money out of Nigeria because they didn't know what we do. And that time we're hearing about boy language, boy language, boy language, such that the price of Indomie crashed in the UK, 2015, 2016, and 17. Because people can, someone has stolen money, they can go and buy product and ship it. And it will do it without declaration. Now that has stopped because declaration now is not compulsory and there's a process to it. CBN is involved, custom and different agency. Unless the person is shipping by road, like the yam you talk about, some people ship yam by road to Ghana and ship it out of Ghana because Nigeria yeah. is having issue with the way some of the yam we have exported, which is generally with perishables, uh, are at issues. And so some countries are not okay with yam from Nigeria. Canada will, Canada will not even take yam from Nigeria. But they will take it from Ghana. Same for US. So Nigeria is the largest producer of yam, but Ghana is one of the largest exporters of yam in the world because they've gotten their ass right, particularly with perishable. If you are shipping perishable by air, you have you are okay in Nigeria. But if you're by sea, you need to know what you're doing to be able to minimize your error rate and the good getting spoiled as much as possible. Wow. Ha. Huh. Now you have opened a whole lot of things um, from from what you have said. Nigeria is the largest producer of yam, but and Ghana Kassawa. is the largest exporter of yam. That is not sitting right in my brain, right? And so it looks like if I have yam, it pays me to take it to Ghana, right? And 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 now when you talk about price price of Indomie crashed, now so let's take that as an hypothetical case. So let's assume someone is moving money, like we know how they do it. And it's using Indomie to move money, right? And me, I'm not moving money, I'm just doing my business. And I've exported, he has exported, and price of Indomie has crashed in the UK. How does that, won't I run at a loss? That's it, it affects you, which is why as much, one of the, my cardinal principle for an exporter, one of the things you must do is to have a rep at destination, so any product you are trying to ship, someone at this should be able to give you, look, this is the retail price. So for example, if I want to export this water and the retail price is five pounds in the UK, I should be able to export it at 2.5 pounds profitably. Mm. If I can't ship it at 2.5 pounds profitably, don't bother shipping it. That's a very crude way of deciding if the product is profitable in first place. So if I have yeah. such rep and I'm shipping, ordinarily, if I'm to ship, I should have had an agreement with a buyer who will be the off-taker and they are giving me a price which I should have checked to be sure if this price is giving me. And it's going to give me that price based on the current reality in the market. It's not for yeah. me to check against myself to see if this price is good enough. Now, so if I have that agreement in place, it will be an issue for me because we have an agreement already. Uh, but if I'm using the model whereby I ship in and then I distribute because I'm on ground. What you said is going to be a challenge. But I should have done my research to be able to check what is happening in the market. But that does not mean the price cannot change suddenly because if I'm shipping from Nigeria to the UK, it will take about three to four weeks for the good to arrive. So it's possible that that happened within that period. So what you're saying is possible. But if I have a rep, maybe I can, to a large extent, minimize the impact on me, particularly when I have an agreement signed already. So the person that is buying can then wait. I mean, such kind of product will be in the market maybe for a month, two months, three months, four months, and then I'll probably be able to begin to also sell at a profitable price. But it's a concern, and that's why having a rep on ground to do some research before you ship can help minimize the impact of that as much as possible. So what you're saying invariably is that 
export is not always that profitable. You can export and still run at a major loss. Is that what you're saying? Just like another business. Correct. Okay. Okay. I just need to be sure because the way they talk about export, it's almost as if it's sure money. Ah, once you, you know what dollar is saying now, eh? once you move it out of Nigeria like this and you convert the money, bagam, you have made, you have blown. I want to blow, I want to blow. <laughs> big, big things they would like, right? Okay. Um, now, that takes me to this next question. Um, so let's talk about the technicalities. What do I need to know if I want to get into export as maybe someone who wants to, do you even suggest that I get going as a group or do I go as an individual? Um, no, let me, let me, before I ask that question, um, you touch on something that people can actually move goods while they are traveling. I'm aware, and there have been cases of people who um, carry books abroad let's say faith-based people, and then what they say at the, where's my guest? Just I like can this. hear you, please, on my oh, monitor. Oh. I don't know what happened, but I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Admin, please, can you help me get my my guest back on, on the... I, I can hear you. Okay, good. Now, so I've heard people say things like, um, you know, get to the border and they're carrying, let's say 2,000, 3,000 books. And they ask them, oh, what are you doing this? And they say, oh, it's for free distribution. That's what they say at the customs. Then they eventually get to America and um, UK and they sell them. Right? And we see a lot of that. In fact, I've seen um, there was a there was one leader of a denomination that was being dragged in the US, you know, by someone that he fell out with, who used to maybe pass it for him. And then the case became um, everything this guy brought to the UK, US, you know, it was actually selling. But they would, they would declare the customs that, no, it's for distribution, it's for missionary and things like that. Now, what do you say to that? Um, do you think that can backfire? Because I know a lot of people do that. Yeah, yeah, yes, it can. can. It can. It can. Um, if... Sorry. It can. It can, actually. Uh, in fact... Um... There was a particular comedian that was talking about this issue. He would go to the U.S. and um, they would pay for performance. And they're saying, you have to pay tax for that money before you leave the U.S. And eventually he had to. Do you know? mm -hmm. So he, 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 he shouldn't, if I'm, the, if I'm bringing good in, now there are good I can bring in that is allow, um, they are not, like even Nigeria, if I'm shooting from Nigeria, there's a quantity I will ship that is not of commercial value, particularly hand luggage. Things I'll be able to put within 50 kg, maybe max 100 kg. But by the time I'm having 200, 300, 400 kg, and I'm declaring that is um, is hand luggage or is um, is personal effect. That's the word currently being used. Personal effect. Then it becomes an issue. It it, it shouldn't be done because if eventually they they discover it, of course. They can even blacklist the business such that the such an individual might not be able to even come into the country or even do business in that country. So if you are living in Nigeria, for example, if, if you are shipping, there's a level of good you want to carry, and customers is even interested in the volume of what that particular product because they expect you to declare. The issue, if you declare, of course, the government will expect also you bring back the money because mm. of, like I said, trade-based money laundering and terrorist financing. A, mm -hmm. In fact, the reason why Boko Haram is still thriving in Nigeria and terrorists in another part of the world is because there are people who bring stuff into Nigeria who undervalue it mm -hmm. and then pay. Maybe they bring in good worth $10 million, pay $2 million, and the good is going to be so in Nigeria and provide funding to pay the salaries of the fighters of uh, Iswap and Boko Haram and the like. So, it's a, it's a, it, it, trade is big. So, so many things can be hidden into it. So, countries are very, very conscious of, of that issue, which is why even if you are going to import as an individual in the UK, which is allowed, you still have to declare it and you need to be a taxpayer. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, that comes to me to my question. Um, what are the processes that someone who wants to go into export needs to be aware of? Um, what are the things I need to know? What are the things I might need to do? If I let's say I'm planning to start exporting Gary, um, which is a major, major 
um, especially the Jebu Gari in America. I mean, I I have a place I buy it, buy it from Guinean people from Guin Equatorial Guinea and Ghanaians, right? I buy Jebu Gari from them. I don't know how they make it, you know. Um, so let's say I want to start that business. What are the basic things I need to know? I mean, so before let's I say start, yeah. Okay, let's say I am, I'm not a producer. I, I can be, because all the, I export Gary also to the UK. All the products I export, I don't produce them because I don't need to be a producer. I can actually get someone to produce for me in my brand. Mm -hmm. So I know someone, let's say in Ijebu or in Lagos, wherever it is, who can produce that Gary for me in my own brand or even in, a, in his or our own brand. The, the Gary must have Nabda. Mm. That's a very important prerequisite for any food item. Even Nabda is even talking about the fact that commodity needs to be certified now because of some rejection of Nigerian commodity. So it, it's important. In fact, for me, even, even though US FDA in the US clear of Nabda does not recognize Nabda, but it's a requirement in Nigeria and it's a way of you as an individual, even knowing. That's a way of assuring myself that even my product is of good quality. Because how do I even know my good quality when a third party have not analyzed and taken to the lab? So mm -hmm. if I now have such product and then I want to export, the first thing I need to understand what we call preparation or export readiness. Who, are, who, who do I want to export to? Which market buy Gary? Do I have a rep in that market? Is my business registered? I talked about limited liability company before. By the way, you can do it also as a cooperative or a PLC, but you can't get a certificate as a, a sole proprietorship, a, an enterprise. You have to be limited liability or PLC or a cooperative that can get a certificate. So I applied to get a certificate. Now, let's assume I'm in Nigeria. Let's say my wife is in America and we're doing it together. Now, it makes it a lot easier because now, because he's there, he can easily reach out to potential buyer and agree on the terms, payment, other details. Now, if I don't have such, it's important I have a, someone on ground there who can do that for me. And the mm -hmm. reason is simple. When there are issues, and there will be issues that require your attention, a rep or grant can make, can easily help sort out such issues. Hmm. If I don't have such representative, then do I want to go and now get a visa if I don't have, and or I now have to fly down because there's an issue? But if there's a rep, you easily go there, and that, the rep also should be such that he has a stake in the business, maybe a commission or something. So he's not doing it for free, actually. So because he was going to take his time, so having that rep will be on ground, and there are ways you can get data of importers. It can be purchased online. Or people importing the products you want to bring into the US, reach out to them, talk to them. Now, getting sample across is important. So that the sample, what you see is what you get. So if I pack my garden in this particular way, I send it to you. Let me show you a product. So let's say I want to export this is a cashew nut. I'm currently trying to export this product to Canada. This product is produced somewhere in Canada, and there are wow. different variants. So, and I've sent sample to the rep I'm working with in Canada because the person that I want to buy need to see. In fact, in the case of Canada, they said it has because of the French community, it has to have label in French. So you can see some label on it in French. Mm. So when the sample is given to the potential buyer, he will be able to make a recommendation. Oh, the size is too big. The size is too small. Oh, um, um, you need to change the labeling to this. You need to include this on labeling. All those, so if I'm okay and I can make those adjustments, I make the adjustment, send sample again for them to see, and they're okay. And we agree on price. Now, for me to agree on price, I need to also know the cost I'll be incurring in Nigeria. Mm. The, if I'm shipping by sea, the forwarding and clearing. By the way, if I started from Nigeria, you don't pay export duty. And that happened for many countries. Because, I mean, countries actually, like China and some other countries, actually give you Money. It's not like Nigeria was paying exporter for exporting. Wow. Currently, Nigeria still have a number of incentives for exporter. You don't pay export duty. You don't pay VAT on your export proceed. You mm. don't pay company income tax on your profit. This is a Babangida law. Wow. Uh, SAP. And they have renewed over time 
The idea is, and they still have export expansion grant. Why will the government do that? Because they understand how important it is to generate forex. So if, if I agree with the buyer and I know all my pricing, the NXP, the only fee I pay is 0.5% of the FOB value. So FOB value is the value of the goods plus profits, free on board. So if I'm exporting good work, $10,000, the only fee I pay the government is 0.5%. Of ten thousand dollars, that's what I'm going to pay to the government, and it's actually a supervision fee because government engage a private organization to do inspection of that product before it can be shipped. So I've gotten my, I've got, I've been able to get a buyer by virtue of either with my family friends or I engage a rep that was able to get it. I send sample, and we have signed the agreement. Then I can go ahead and apply that I want to export. By this time, I've signed the contract. I know the quantity I need to ship. I know my price. I understand the other documentation because international trade involves a bit of documentation. So, for example, I will apply, I will fill a form called NXP, Nigeria Export Proceed Form. Mm. NXP. Now, that's a declaration form. I will pay 8,000 naira to the bank for that. I fill that form. Attach a pro an invoice, a proforma invoice. I attach the export certificate I got from the Nigerian Promotion Council. And then I submit online, engage a client agent who will engage with the government agency at the port to do all the port activity. That will come in some money also. Immediately I clear through custom. This can be done now in Nigeria. It can be done within a week. I'm talking practically because I do it for UK shipment. It can be done with in a papa in Lagos. It can be done within a week. And with the road on Tinkan being done, if we are going through Tinkan, I'm sure we can do it within a week or two. By this time also, my agent that I'm engaging will have booked my a space for me on the shipping, on the vessel, so that when the good arrives, I mean, the vessel arrives, the good can be loaded on the container and ship. Now, why the good is in transit, the document required for the buyer to clear. Typically, a transport document, if I'm shipping by air, it will be an airway bill. If I'm shipping by C, it will be bill of lady. And then I need an invoice parking lift. Sometimes I might need some other document, inspection. Sometimes, in fact, some people will ask for certificate of origin. Because in some country, they might be giving Nigeria rebate on duty. But they need evidence that it came from Nigeria and you can get certificate of origin from Nasima, about 26,000 uh, from Nasima. All these documents will be shipped by courier to the buyer. The good will take it by month. Two months, depending on the uh, on the destination. If it's not America, about four to six weeks or eight weeks, depending on shipping line. UK about three to four to six weeks. Upon arrival, the original document will have arrived with the with the rep, which he can give to the buyer who also engage an agent, just like I engage an agent in Nigeria. In North America, they call them custom broker, and then they can clear the goods and then move it to wherever destination I want it to go to at the destination market. Now, at this point, agreement with the buyer might be, payment will be made upon shipment. For most buyers, and for first shipment, they want to see before they pay, most of the time. So that means you might not get payment until about 30 days upon arrival, because that means upon arrival, if I week plus to clear delivery, unloading, and checking, about three weeks, thereabout, and then of course, payment can be made after. For some buyers, payment can be made ahead, depending on the uh, the understanding between the buyer and the seller. Thank you very much. Now, um, I want to talk a bit on I want to talk a bit on forex. How do I okay. source forex? For example, I mean Nigeria. You have talked about you have to pay on the arrival. You have to pay this agent. How do I source for forex? Knowing fully well that maybe CBN is not going to give me. I'm not done good. They're not going to give me. So am I going to do black market? And what what is the impact? In fact, the dollar, Naira instability, how does it affect my affect. quest to, to take part in this business? Okay. Now, for export, the only FX expense is the payment of freight with the shipping line. All other expenses are in Naira. Now, I've, I've only experienced... FS risk in export once in Nigeria. Mm. In 2009, I did a shipment to Germany, charcoal shipment. Euro was 210 when I did the shipment. 
when I got paid, Euro was 190. Because Naira appreciated. This was Solido era. Mm. And Nigeria had a lot of forex. In recent time, I know, since then, rather, all the shipment I've done, is either the rate is the same or a slight change or sometimes even higher. Okay, currently, I did a shipment to the UK. Pounds was about 2,000. No, one nine. Now pounds, pounds over 2,000. That, that's a typical experience of a number of experts in Nigeria. So for, ex, for import, what you've said is a big challenge for import. It's not a major challenge because to a very large extent, the FS often appreciate in favor of exporter in most cases, maybe 90% of the case in Nigeria right now, even from time before. I mean, it's, it's, it's not very common. Unless now there was a case, you know, when the CBN government was taking some step before that made the dollar to move from 1.5 to 1,000, you mm. notice it didn't stay for long because it was, um, you know, it's like when, and that's the challenge I have with the current government. In fact, I, I met with um, uh, FO the other time and we're discussing this issue <laughs> and, and he was telling me his opinion and what he recommended she would do. <laughs> that they are not doing. You know, because there's some step the government is so, supposed to take that will have probably, and one of them include serious investment in what we bring in for us for the purpose uh, of export. Mm -hmm. So it's not a major challenge for export in Nigeria, but it's, it's a big challenge for import. So if the only fee I pay as FX, if I'm exporting, is freight charge, and I can really go and purchase FS from BDC, pay into my account, and use it to pay, a number of shipping lines will be okay with that. Although some, we say they want inflow from abroad, but most people will be okay with that. Now, um, thank you very much about that. Now, you've talked about rep, rep. I need to get the rep um, abroad. How do I get that rep? Ah, my sure I'm not going to get someone who is going to rip me, like uh, in the voice of Potty. What he rip me, or what he rip? They want to rip me. <laughs> How do I ensure that I don't get some? No, I, I, can, I, can, I can prevent that by ensuring that my rep does not have anything to do with money. Okay. I pay him commission based on what was paid to me. Mm. In getting rep, there are different options. If I don't have friend and relative, I would recommend freelancer. Mm. On freelancer, you can get professional sales rep and you can decide, agree on the price and you pay them after they deliver. Mm. So you can go on freelancer but they will hold the money in your card between 750 and 1500 dollars it can be lower but if you bid more of course if you are you freelancer before if you bid more you're likely going to get very good professional that will show up to be able to help to be able to uh get those uh buyers so i can use freelancer i can use upwork there are a number of other platforms i can use if i don't have a friend or relative if I have a friend or relative, then I can engage them and I have material we can give them for free that they can help them to learn what they need to do to be able to get those buyers or to engage with the buyers in the export okay. market. Thank you. Um, how do I manage the bit of sourcing for products then getting a market abroad? Um, for example, you've showed a cash you know, in Kano. Um, those people, do they package it in Kano? Is there a company there? You know, how do I talk to them? How do I ensure that quality control is uh, maintained? It's not going to spoil, you know, then how do I, so how do I find the market, you know, um, who I'm exporting to, you know, um, how does that bit work? For the product, before I decide on the product I want to export, number one, is the product prohibited? You need to check. Nigeria have a prohibition list. It's very small. Scrap metal is prohibited. Corn is prohibited. Wood corn is prohibited. Is, corn is prohibited. For export, yes. Wow. Yes, because we're not producing enough. Hmm. Um, unprocessed rubber is prohibited. Raw wood is prohibited. Artifact and antiquities are prohibited. Um... Animal classifiers, endangered species like lion, zebra, lizard, uh, lizard are prohibited. 
and imported goods are prohibited. Now, wow. those are the prohibited, are very few. So all of that products in Nigeria are allowed for export. So prohibition list. Then we have their potential market. The product I'm looking at, if I've decided, for example, if I'm, let's say I'm in UK or America, I should have seen the product. So I know like there's a market for this. Now, there's this website I would recommend you can visit or know what is the demand of a product in a particular country. It's called trademap.org. Trade is a, a World Bank project by ITC. Trade map map.org now trade map you, the, and you can get a video on youtube to on how to navigate the website trade map give you free data on different export market around the world for different products now so some product you might need to know their code every product have a unique code called hs code so you might need to go and check um uh, on google what is the hs code for cassava fleas otherwise it's called gary what is the hs code for cashew nut so you can get this. So when you are searching, you can search with HS code. It will help you to refine your search. So that may, may me know, okay, there's a potential market. Then I already, maybe I'm in North America. I know there's a, there are purchasers already. Now, producer, very important point you raise. That's it. That's actually, getting buyer is not as difficult as the producer. Okay, I, I has dropped the trademark. It's not as bad as producer. The producer is actually the most important to be able to ensure that you, to be able to minimize quality issue producer, the minimum should be that they have nab that. Now, if it's food, they can also do HASO. HASO will say an American certification called Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point. If they have that, fantastic. So that means they have that on top of nab that, then you can be sure of the quality of the product. If they have nab that, also it's good, but they have HASO that gives an additional, uh, 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 what's the name? Comfort. Now, in sourcing the product, you have to search. So there is a body in Nigeria called National Association of Small-Scale Industrialists. Mm. Then there is another one called SMEDAN, Small and Medium Enterprise. Sorry, no, NASMI, National Association of Small and Enterprise in Nigeria, NASMI. Then there's another one called NASIMA. Now, this organization have a lot of businesses within the network that if you join and you're on their platform and you say, I'm in need of this product, you will have two, three, four, five people that will show interest that say, okay, I can get it for you. Or you talk to this person, talk to this person, because those kind of community. So join a chamber of commerce, city chamber, Lagos chamber, uh, Abuja chamber of commerce, Kano chamber of commerce. Those are the community I would recommend you join to be able to get products. Or to know those that are get that sourcing and supplying, and then you can visit them to be able to know do they have the certification? Is the product of right quality? You cannot do your own due diligence on them, but to be able to identify them, you need to be done to those communities, and that will make it easier. On the buyer side, a rep on ground make it easier, but there are other ways around it. So, for example, if um, I want to ship a product to a country. Sometimes if you do a Google search, most of the time there might be association of those people in those countries. If you find the association and they have a website, you can find the list of their member on their website and you can reach out to them. But I don't recommend you reach out to any buyer in Europe and America from Nigeria. Hmm. That you are black and you are from Nigeria, you are a fraud until you prove otherwise. So you are better off not reaching out directly because they might not even respond at all. So that's why I only recommend if someone, even if it's a friend or relative that initiates conversation, that might make it easier to even continue the conversation from wherever they stop because then they have, you have someone there that they can relate to it. Mm. So using the different options, you can advertise on Facebook, you can buy data from database company like Panjiva and the like of importers and reach out to them. You can uh, you can join Chamber of Commerce. Sorry, you can reach out to Chamber of Commerce in that country. You can um, attend trade fair. Trade fair of people that are trading food product, for example, trade fair on food product in the US or in UK or in Canada would be a good example of what you can attend. Or you can register on some platform like globalbuyersonline.com, uh, tradekey.com, alibaba.com. So these are platforms where buyers are looking for sellers and sellers are looking for buyers. And those are the platforms you can use to be able to get 
bias, but you send it to your due, your due diligence on that platform just to ensure that um, you are in the right, right hand. Because sincerely, either in UK, in America, in Canada, in Africa, there are fraudsters everywhere. So you should do your due diligence, which is the whole essence. Again, I'm coming back to it of having a rep abroad. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question. How can this export process be systemized to attract people who need not get involved in the nitty gritty process as they are busy but needs to have other sources of income in Forex? Turning this into a great international business for more people to participate, for example, create investment notes, create process, auditing system, risk management system, sales management system, quality control. Thank you, sir. That's from our guru. Mr. Goswil Umunakwe. <laughs> it's an it's a international trade is a logistic and supply chain business. Mm. So if we are going to systemize, we're going to systemize the supply chain management system. That's what we have to systemize. The supply chain management, because that's actually it's actually a supply chain management business. So a, a good understanding of supply chain management. And leveraging on technology already existing within the supply chain management space will probably help to a very large extent solve what you're talking about, about systemizing the process. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, supply chain, supply chain. So, do we need to have a supply chain expert or what? Um, or no, no I'm talking about, no, for a start, for okay. a start. That might not be extremely necessary. That become necessary when the volume is growing, and then of course that can be put in place. Uh, there is a supplier or a producer, and there is the business who is a trader who plug into the supplier, and then have an operation person managing the process, and then plug into a buyer abroad. So I have a supplier maybe two or three suppliers, but there must be an operation person who will handle the documentation and the process. Government have automated a good part of this document. 60% automation. We still have about 40 that people are still talking about automating so that we can have, so that you won't have to even interact with any human being from beginning to the end. Currently, you still have to interact to some extent uh, at the port, but that is being done in some country where you... I don't even need to go to the port. There are port outside, um, um, dry port, where I can move the good to that it will go to the port from there. But that is not going to be in Nigeria, which is why you need an operation person who will manage that process. But for a start, it, 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 won't, be, it won't be a big challenge, but what he's saying is a necessary thing that must put in place as the volume begins to grow because, but there are, there are systems that are already technology-driven system in place to manage large, just like, that's where that's where the lack of dangote, PZ, uh, uh, Boa Sugar, and the like. I mean, big giant organization that I do a lot of trade in Nigeria are able to manage their processes. So there are system already in place, but the, the another thing I think will be required when the volume is small, but as volume is grow because that's actually even necessary to sustain that volume. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you this question: What are the pitfalls of um this? Um, you know, trading exports. What are the likely um, pitfalls, right? And, and how do you ensure that you mitigate against them? At least from someone who is experienced like you. There are three major for general international trade. Generally, there are three major areas of concern. Uh, concern. You've mentioned one of them: currency risk, which apply a lot to import in the case of Nigeria than export. The other part are country risk and commercial risk. The mm. country risk are. If I'm shipping to Venezuela, I'm shipping to Ukraine, I'm shipping to countries that have economic or political issue or war, then I can see ship. I need to now ask myself, what do I need to do to mitigate the risk of Venezuela or Ukraine? And there are trade finance instruments that I can use to mitigate that risk. Hmm. Now, the other one is commercial, which is the risk on the part of the exporter being able to get the right quality. Now, some of the questions you asked before now, speak to those commercial risks because I need to know the product. I need to be sure of the quality. So, for example, let me come back to Gary. If I'm going to export Gary, I can't put Gary in a regular sack. It has to be in a sack that is laminated because of moisture touching it on the outside. 
for agro mm. commodity in its entirety, moisture is a big challenge. From cocoa to cashew mm. to ginger to gum arabic, even finished product is a big challenge. In fact, a product like this, it must not have pores. Some products like this have pores. You won't see there are tiny micro pores that are necessary for some product, but for a product like this, it and and and, and you notice it's, it's completely opaque. Now you see, notice this place is open, so you can see what is inside. This is opaque because the more exposure to air, light rays, the higher the rate of deterioration, particularly if it's an oil product. For example, plantain chips or any oil product. Oxidation sets in and that can make the rate. So it's important to ensure the right packaging is done. If the product is packaged correctly, having ensured post harvest handling is good, then we can minimize the impact, which is the commercial risk, which is quality issues, which is why I recommend for any first starter, avoid commodities, focus on value added goods that is well packaged. And there's a quality control in the process of manufacturing it. So you can minimize commercial risk. The other part of commercial risk is the payment risk. That's why I recommend having a rep. That's exactly why I recommend a rep. If I don't have... Now, I can use trade instruments like letter of credit guarantee standby. The challenge is if I'm a starter and I'm dealing with a buyer and the volume is not large, some buyer will not give you an LC. In fact, some buyer will tell you, if I give you instrument you don't ship, I will have lost money. So why should I give you that? Unless we now say, okay, let me give you a performance guarantee, then you give me an LC, then we can minim both minimize our risk. But somebody will not want to do that. And that's why a rep on ground can help to a very large extent minimize uh, that risk. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, you have um, really um, done justice to this. I don't know if anybody has a question, but... When do you think is the right time if I want to start this business? Can I, are they, is this season now? Are there, so for example, December is coming. Do sales go down that period? Or maybe there is a freezing on the sea, you know? Uh, you, <laughs> I'm just thinking like a layman, right? Um, when do you think is that, can I start tomorrow? The, the, and then, yeah. The, it depends. So for example, I, I, I sell a gig, pop, dry pop. Mm -hmm. I ship it to the UK. We sell more during winter. Mm -hmm. So now we are shipping now because summer will soon end be uh, coming to an end and winter will come in. People buy at other times, but the, the volume, the demand is higher at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm doing commodity in Nigeria, dry season is the time. During the rainy season, people are planting. So from August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, that's the time that, and if you check Nigerian export data, that's also when you see the volume by NBS results showing increase in the volume. Q3, Q4, sometimes Q1, you see a lot of increase in the volume of export because the press is now. If you are doing solid minerals, it's also better during dry season because during rainy season, the mines are flooded. So people do a lot. So a lot of activity happen from this period for both agro commodity and solid minerals. But for manufactured goods, Anytime, as long as there is demand, anytime. But there are more demand at some point. For example, like I said, a product like uh, PAP, which is competing with, uh, which a lot of people take because they need to feel warm. Just it's, a, it's competing against coffee. Mm. <laughs> so coffee is competing against it because people also take coffee for the same reason. But apart from that, most of the time, finished goods can be shipped at any time. But for commodities, because of the time production production happen, even though demand is year round, but production uh, is within a particular period and harvest a particular period, and that affects the time you can do the shipment. I mean, the way you sound, you talked about this, and I know, I mean, I respect your expertise on this. Um, you know, it sounds so doable, but I'm wondering, so why? It's doable. It's challenging, I, and I won't deny that fact. Uh -huh. But I've been in this for almost two decades, so it should it should be. It's not what I do. So maybe that's why my sound is doable because I do it. I know. It, it, it does require having some understanding of the process and a little bit of hand old working with someone who is open and be able to let people know what you need to avoid and what you need to do. You will hand old us and we will come back and share the money. <laughs> I don't have any problem that, with that. <laughs> that we have exported our first Gario. Okay. 
we're going to do that. Um, you, you know, and as you were talking, I was um, having a conversation with Gus Will um, because, I mean, in our, on the cooperative side of things, there's what we can do. Even in the diaspora here, for those of us in the U.S., I mean, we have Black Vault, you know, which we are thinking of edging our retirement against, you know, we thought about um, real estate and all. But, I mean, this looks like something else that we can act as technical partners and, um, you know, because... If um, this is doable and it's regulated, that's the thing I love about it, right? It's regulated. You have talked about processes, certifications you need to get, you know. So it's not as, um, you know, your your goods are lost in transit and things like that, right? So thank you very much. Any question from the floor before I release um, our export doctor? And this one is one of our own. We are proud of him. He's a savior. Eh? <laughs> Okay, um, looks like there is no question from the floor. So there's floor. a question. Anybody with a question you want to ask, you can raise your hand or... You said, I'm interested in exporting palm oil to Australia. Oh, okay, that's... It must have sent the private... We can, I can, we can help, that's not a problem at all. Okay. If you already have the product and you have a destination, you have some most of the problem, so it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so thank you very much, um, expert doctor. Um, we are, thank you know, for having me. If people are not see, getting serious about it, me, I'm getting serious about it, and I'm going to I'm going to be on your in your DM. Um, what we try to do is to try and find a way to do it for the group, right? And so I know that um, for the subscribers, members of um, House of Saviors, they've had a meeting with him, which was more expansive and all. I just don't know why they have not exported, but I'm going to be on their neck. We're going to export um, because, I mean, this looks like something we should get involved with. We have no reason to complain about scarcity when there is there is a whole lot. Yes, Mr. BC, I can see you, eh? Black Vault. They, I mean, it's willing to an old and old. Uh, so it's something we should be moving things in high volumes and, you know, um, at the end of every month sharing money. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bamiguli, for, for this amazing, amazing session.